हरे कृष्णा वर्ल्ड वॉर थ्री अ भगवत गीता परस्पेक्टिव एज द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन इजराइल एंड हमास is prolonging and threatens to expand let us try to look at this and the prospect of an impending war from the bhagavad gita's perspective i'll talk about three things sparks slogans and soberness sparks can lead to huge fires that can burn down entire forests entire cities when world war 1 happened it started with just one prince who was not even very influential being assassinated and that led to a chain of events just cascaded into a global war the like of which was unknown in recent historical memory when the british polity sent their soldiers they said our soldiers will be back in about 5 to 10 days they didn't come back for 5 years and many of them never came back the bhagavad gita states that inside and outside us can be the perfect storm the mind inside us is like a raging wind vayu rivasudushkaram if it gets filled with anger with vengeance with revenge then it can create a storm and outside certain stimuli which we perceive the stimuli can be vayur navam ivambasi that our whole consciousness our whole life can become like a boat on a water body that is swept away by a stormy wind and where we can get swept away because of the inner and outer storm it can't be predicted right now the way things are going if a alliance is formed with israel and america on one side and the hamas being supported by iran maybe by turkey then eventually by russia and china who in a multipolar world everybody is trying to grab power and live gain leverage this whole thing can go terribly out of control for most of us in this last generation or the generation before that we have not really experienced the horrendous consequences of living through a war and especially a global global war so we all can pray that the spark does not cause a huge conflagration that it can be dealt with that brings me two parts first is what might cause the spark to grow into a fire and what can prevent it so that that's the second part is slogans slogans are not solutions slogans can be that oh these people are all terrible people destroy all of them so slogans are often used as emotional manipulation tools and they are also used to get people to do things which they would normally not do now when we are faced with some horrendous evil at that time it's natural that we want to react and destroy that source of evil but it is vital that in trying to destroy evil we don't create greater evil or we don't ourselves become evil it is a horrendous reality of history that often things that were touted as the perfect solutions ended up becoming huge causes of distract destruction the world war 1 as which i mentioned earlier was touted as the war to end all wars not only did it not end any war it was soon followed by a much bigger war it was like world war 2 so there is slogans that promise this is the solution to all problems they only make us puppets in the hands of people with vested agendas whether those vested agendas be of religious fanatics who want to take over the world or those religious those agendas be of the what a former american president eisenhower called the military industrial complex where people come together the military and the industry come together just to make money and profit from causing wars causing mayhem 
causing destruction and in the process increasing weapon production and increasing the money that they get. The Bhagavad Gita talks about the demoniac nature of the 16th chapter 16.9 that etam drishtim avashtabya once a materialistic worldview wherein material profit and material gain are all that are seen as paramount then prabhavanti ugra karmana kshayaya jagato hitaha that the whole world can be destroyed by these people and such people think that that is a sign of their power and their progress. So it's vital that such slogans not be seen as solutions. After 9-11, America launched a war on terror. Now, the problem with that is terror is not an entity. Terror is a strategy. And whom, whom was the war against? And much of the Middle East ended up more destabilized than rather than the problem is being solved. Of course, military power and military deterrence are required. But at the same time, we have to have a sense of perspective and proportionality. And that brings us to the last part, soberness. That the Bhagavad Gita says, intelligence can be in the mode of goodness, sattva or in the mode of ignorance. In the mode of ignorance, intelligence distorts our understanding of reality and makes us believe that the very cause of the problem is the source of the solution. Adharmam dharma mitiya manyate tamasa avruta sarvartha viparitamsya buddhi saparta tamasi. That's 1832. So sarvartha viparitamsya. That we, in, we put fuel into the flames of fire and that we think will extinguish the fire. But that rarely happens. And such soberness is demonstrated in the Bhagavad Gita itself. While the Bhagavad Gita was followed by a war, while the Bhagavad Gita in one sense was spoken to Arjuna to persuade him to do his duty of protecting the world from exploiters, but at the same time the Bhagavad Gita doesn't use any hate speech, any inflammatory rhetoric. In fact, not even once in the entire Bhagavad Gita does Krishna refer to the incidents throughout the Mahabharat where Arjuna's family was insulted and threatened and the assassination was attempted. Draupadi's dishonoring or the burning of the Pandavas in Varnavar, none of those incidents are mentioned. Krishna focuses not on revenge, not at all. He focuses on order, on establishing a moral and spiritual order in society, dharma. Dharma in the Bhagavad Gita is not exactly religion. It is basically social order. And the war is eventually fought, not for annihilating the enemy, but for and highlighting the dark elements within the enemy. That it was Duryodhan and others who had to be killed. But it was, the Gita is a sober discussion. And it is that soberness that we need. So that in trying to find solutions to this enormous atrocity done by terror. It is not that a greater atrocity is committed. So we can pray that those who are in charge get soberness that they get the intelligence and the self-restraint by which that with the world having weapons of mass destruction in their hands that mass destruction doesn't result but that justice comes for all those who have been grievously wronged without further grievous wrongs being committed. Thank you.